Hi, I'm Mike and welcome back to Rutland Cycling. This year, we're celebrating our 40th birthday and to mark this occasion, we're going to take a look back at one special bike that made history 40 years ago. Yubes Otomelk's Tour de France winning TI Rally team bike. Now you'd be forgiven if you're not familiar with Yubes Otomelk's name, if you're new to the world of cycling, but he's well and truly stamped his name on the history books as world champion in 1985 and having won the 1980 edition of the Tour de France, along with starting and finishing the Tour de France another 15 times. Now that's a record breaking total distance of 62,885 kilometers. It's been 40 years since Yupe stood on the top step of the podium in France with this TI Rally team bike. And Rally have marked the milestone by making a limited run of replica bikes, just like this one, the anniversary edition. However, what we have here is the original. Iconic in its design, it's a bike that well and truly stood out alongside the competition of its time. No internally routed cables, no power meter pedals, and no disc brakes in sight. But 40 years ago, this bike was the one everyone wanted to have. So looking at the original features of this bike, we've got a Brooks suede saddle, a Campagnolo drivetrain, finished off with Mavic rims, wrapped in classic tan wool rubber. Iconic Reynolds 753 tubing makes up the frame of this bike, joined together with Rally's own lugs that hold it all together. Cockpits from Chinelli with the classic drop bars, and that's wrapped in Velox cloth tape to keep things retro. Shifting is taken care of with these classic Campagnolo down tube shifters, paired with a 2x7 gearing that really would have taken some serious going to get up the hills in the Alps. In comparison, 11 speeds at the back is the normal in this day and age, and the lowest cogs are way bigger than what we see here. So, how did we end up with bikes like this? Well, over the past 40 years, much has changed in the way we build bikes and the technology used to do so. Manufacturing processes and a development in carbon fiber technology have allowed the bike brands to really experiment with new designs to make us comfier, faster, and weigh a lot less. The geometry has stayed relatively consistent, but tube positions and shaping have changed quite considerably. With the introduction of carbon frames, bike brands were able to test different shapes and tube positions for the most aerodynamic, strong, and lightweight combinations. Fast forward to today and taking a look at the Specialized S-Works Tarmac SL7, for example, the creme de la creme of the Specialized road range, if you will, designed purely with racing in mind. The Specialized engineers have created the most effective combination of aero stiffness and weight, while keeping the fundamental touch points of a road bike the same. The saddle position, handlebar position, and crank position aren't that different to those seen on the TI Rally, but everything in between is. You'd find it hard to find a cable shown on one of these pro bikes today. And in a world where thousands are spent chasing marginal gains, we often see designers push out the boat to create innovative designs, such as the one piece handlebar and stems and designing smart features into the frame to make the bike as a package, as fast as it can be. So when we compare bikes like the TI Rally that we have here today, the top of the range road bike when Rutland Cycling had first been set up on the shores of Rutland Water 40 years ago, to the modern bikes we see today in the Pro Peloton. It's clear to see just how far bicycle design and tech has come. But for me, the most exciting thing is what will come next. What will bikes look like in the next 40 years? And will they even look like the bikes we ride today? Well, one thing's for sure, and that's as long as there are two wheels and a set of pedals, we'll all ride it. Let us know what you think of this classic in the comments section down below. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Rutland Cycling.